Hey guys, I'm back in the shop today and we are trying to figure out an oil pump failure. Uh, I am building a motor for Mark and uh, when I pulled it apart I found out the oil pump failed. So his car is going to be roughly 700 horse or so and we need to build a decent oil pump for it and his is probably not going to be usable so we're going to find out today what happened. Let me show you what's going on. Here's the oil pump, and it, as you can see, I cannot twist it. I can, cannot get this bad boy to hardly turn at all. She is basically seized up. So we're gonna find out what actually happened with this bad boy, and um, we're gonna build a brand new one with some straight cut gears. Here's some uh, part numbers from Mitsubishi for some of these parts and pieces that you'll be using. Um, uh, this is the balance shaft block off plate. It's a little uh, It's a little rubber disc that blocks off this instead of having to use a freeze plug use this fits right in there That's the part number here is The balance shaft stubby right there. There's your part number This cover that is that cover it has an o-ring behind it, but these brand new covers that's the part number for that. Your straight cut oil pump gears, here you go. So here's the little one. And then this is the bigger one. This is that guy right there. Straight cut gear, straight cut gear. So those are the part numbers that you're gonna need to get from Mitsubishi to uh, do this. And uh, that way, you know, you can do a nice straight cut oil pump. But uh, as you can tell, as I got a whole box of extra parts, got some turn down balance shafts here, so. And then, in case you're wondering also, this is the spacer. This eliminates the, um, the actual balance shaft uh, uh, belt gear right here. So if you wanna get this, that's the part number for Mitsubishi for that. So, um, there's all our part numbers. Well, uh, let's get to uh, tearing apart this oil pump and see what happened to it. And then let's build a straight cut stub shaft oil pump for this motor as we're waiting on the uh, crankshaft to get here because uh, it's on back order from K1, so we're waiting. All right, here we go. All right, you're gonna need a uh, 14 millimeter for this. These are 12s and then you're gonna need, oh, well this one's got an Allen wrench. A lot of times you need one of these for that. So, first off, Do this. Let's pop this gear off, see what we got. Huh, it's spinning now. Okay. Boom. Gear comes off. Alright, doesn't look too bad. Can't really move it though, but. Pull this bottom apart. This is impact screwdriver. That's on. That's off. And here we go. There it goes. Boom. different. Ooh, look at that. Look at that build up right there. Ooh, we've got some uh, got some shavings in there, don't we? That is uh that is no bueno. I'm not gonna be using this. This bearing surface feels okay. As you can tell it, it kind of comes through. But we got a lot of oil. We got a lot of shavings in this bad boy. This might, this might actually be from uh, the motor because the motor ingested a lot of uh, its internal pieces. So look at that, dude. That thing does not want to turn at all. That thing is toast. So when this happens, this is junk. Can't use it. Can't use this. 
this turn down balance shaft I don't really like it it looks like they shaved it with like a, a they sanded it or something I don't know I'm not probably gonna end up just eliminating all of this right here so let's see what we got here this oil pump is toast I'm not gonna save the gear so yep there it is we've got look at that look at all of that look at that goodness right there Woo! look at that that is toast so from the looks of it it just ingested the motor and can't really tell but down in there we've got a lot of marring up right there yeah and right there I don't know if you can see it very well but now that I've got the uh, pieces of metal out of there yeah she spins a little bit better she is gritty though man talk about gritty oh, she's getting tough right there oh, got loose again alright so what I think we got going on here is it just ingested the motor and it decided to um, to mess up this bearing surface this is aluminum this is hardened steel so this case is really soft yeah and I mean it's not not horribly destroyed internally there but you know this bearing surface in here is messed up so yeah alright so what you want to do with all this stuff is you want to throw it away alright so this I took out of my stash of oil pump covers so there is a little bit of scuffing going on right here, a little bit right here. So I like to take a little emery cloth and just get in there and just kind of make sure you just get all the high points, you know, because you've got, got this area right here, and then you got this area right here. These parts have cosmoline on them, so kind of want to get in here. Kind of clean them up. Factory Mitsubishi stub shaft. All right. So this gear doesn't really have the cosmoline on it, but if you look at this gear, we've got all kinds of kind of cosmoline. This is just kind of a, a an anti-rust agent. So put that aside. That's that. Now I'm using a brass bristle, uh, brass bristle brush. That way I'm not gonna, you know, make any real bad scrape marks on this thing. But you kind of, it's good to just get this cosmoline out from underneath all this stuff. It's, it's like wax. Basically, it is wax. But you don't want to get in there and mar this stuff up. There's just a lot of it in between these gear faces, and I kind of want to go through and inspect and make sure that there isn't a, a whole lot of it left. All right, let's go. All right, I used Joe Gibbs, driven, good stuff. So, you know, I want to get in here. You want to lube this guy up right in here. Uh, this cover, uh, I did not end up using it on um, a vehicle. I ended up going with a different cover because uh, we went with, uh, uh, I can't remember if we welded this up or what, anyway. But this cover um, has brand new seals on it. I mean, they're, they're nice and rubbery, so it should be good to go. We want to make sure we lubed up that area. And then you want to get in there and lube up this face right here. Don't have to do a whole lot, but you just want to kind of get this face all lubed up. Okay, so then come in here, lube that up, lube up the face a little more. All right. Ooh, that feels good. Now I'm spinning it. 
And then also you want to feel if there's any kind of deflection. You know, if this cover is bad, if there's something wrong with it, you're going to feel, you know, even with the assembly lube, you'll feel a little bit of deflection in there. I might even help to put the gear on there a little bit. I don't feel anything, so. All right, next thing is red Loctite. You want to lock tight. Now, very important. This gear, this indentation right here, actually goes on this side, just like this. Because this bolt sits in there like this. This bolt rides down inside this little um, cover hole right here. Um, so you want to clean these threads up, make sure they're good and clean. Red Loctite this bad boy. Not too much, just enough. Stick that bad boy down in there. It is a 12 mil. Right. I'll take the rag and kind of double it up here so I don't rip my flush off my hand here. You don't want to put this in a vise. You don't want to put this in a vise. You don't want to put this in a vise. You just want to just grab it and you know that's why you use the red Loctite. Give her a couple good ugga duggas. Go good to go. So a little assembly loop on this face right here. You don't really have to, but you can put a little bit of assembly loop in between the gear teeth here. That way, um, it it's it's okay to do it like that because when this thing pulls a vacuum, if you have an air gap, it'll take a minute for it to, to prime. I always prime my motors with a um, with a drill, but it's not not bad to have a little bit of a slime lube in there. Whoops. There we go. All right. So. Let me just do, yeah, I'll leave that in there. Let me just do this. I'll set this bad boy like that. Let me go ahead and put the gear on. I'll rattle that down a little later. So, now that I've got all this done, now I want to come in here and throw some assembly lube on this face cover right here. There's no, no silicone or anything right here. You don't need it. Don't worry about it. These are machine surfaces. Just want to make sure where you you see where the gear has actually been riding. You want to get a decent amount of assembly lube on on these areas right here. Um, they also it has little alignment. You got a little dot right here, and you got a little dot right here. You can line them up if you want. Uh, I don't know exactly. To tell you the truth, what the alignments are for. Oh well. Anywho. It's all going to be one direction. I mean, once you get this thing in there, once you spin it the right direction, you set it up, the balance shaft, um, you know, the weight will be down on the bottom. So, when you set the motor in there, or when you set this thing in there, uh, you want to make sure that you, you get your balance shaft orientation correct, and then your timing orientation correct right here. So, this thing's kind of wedging itself because it doesn't have any kind of support. So, there's the cover, there's all that fun stuff. Got alignment dowels. So, just press that on, doesn't have to be crazy. Oh yeah, that spins nice. Okay, now, you can use Loctite on these. So. I don't suggest the red. I do suggest some blue. But on the actual screw, let's see, I'm going to move these over. On this screw, I do not recommend Loctite. You're going to hammer that in. I'll show you. But on these bad boys, I do recommend just a little bit of Loctite, not a lot. You do not want to be trying to pull this thing apart because remember it is aluminum so a little blue
blue, 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 you could go. Shake off the excess. All right, this is 12 millimeter, so just get in there and Now, here's your impact screwdriver. The stock screw is a Phillips one. The one that came out of here was kind of an aftermarket. I'm not sure who built this motor, which I, I wasn't really too keen on their building, but um, I mean, this thing's a grade eight screw. It's a decent little screw. We'll set that aside. But this screw, let's spin on in there. And then your your impact screwdriver, you're going to want to twist it to the tightening side. Hang this end off the bench. You hold it tight like this. And then give her about two, three little wax. Nothing crazy. Now you got a nice oil pump. Listen to that. Sounds good. That's the, the clearance on, on your gears. Then grab this guy. And you're just gonna have to hold on to this. Okay. We now have a built oil pump. Boom. Uh, that you just hammer in with a socket, no big deal. This you can just use a, a flathead screwdriver to kind of take it off. You, you pound it this way. And then you kind of pound it this way to tighten it. There is an O-ring underneath here. So you do have to replace that O-ring um, if, uh, if you end up taking it apart and you notice that the O-ring is pretty much plastic. You know, the, the O-rings get just harder than the back of your head. So, But that now is a built oil pump with a stub shaft with straight cut gears. Um, I do like the straight cuts. Um, they ended up going away from the straight cuts due to noise, a little bit of whine, but you know what? Oh yeah, she's starting to quiet it, quieten down. Yeah, that feels good. Woo! That is nice. Nice thing is, go to put your timing belt on, you don't have to worry about that alignment. You don't gotta sit there and mess with that. You just slap your belt on, call it a day. Stub shaft, you know, doesn't, doesn't need uh, any kind of alignment. Um, I did. In the past, I threw a little silicone on the back side of that, but uh, and, uh, anymore I don't. I mean, I just throw a little silicone on the seal itself when I pound it in, kind of lube it as it goes in, so we're good. But that is how you assemble an Evo oil pump. DSM guys, six bolt guys, you can do the same thing. It's basically exactly the same thing, but uh, yeah, so. DSM guys, same assembly, same everything. It's all the same stuff. So there we go. She's good. Now I can bag this bad boy up, set it over there on his motor uh, stuff, and when I'm ready to assemble the motor, just got to get the gasket for the backside, bolt her on. This thing's going to be ready to rock and roll. Until next time, a um, lot of two how to's right now. Um, uh, I'm going to be doing a bunch of other, you know, little how-to videos on uh, Evos and, and, you know, what you can do with, uh, you know, the, the fuel uh, double pumper. Do a more extensive video on the double pumper. But, you know, it's wintertime in Idaho right now, so we're just working on cars and trying to get the races where we can. And um, if you want to see uh, a couple good races, uh, check out uh, my good buddy, uh, Jake Montgomery, uh, JM Racing his page uh he uh we went out the other night in my evo and played around a little bit so uh go check him out you know and like and subscribe mine and like and subscribe his and you know we'll uh, keep putting out the content you know just uh but you guys out here in idaho just trying to have some fun build some cars right on well see you on the next one